Hey, Shine Honors, this is Jim Cremella coming at you with another edition of Shot of Espresso. And this week we are kicking off a new Mother's Day case study uh, on a brand new uh, product that we're gonna that I'll be testing and launching uh, on a new ad account and uh, excited to see what happens. You guys have asked for another case study and we're gonna see if we can get a product type that is not message cards to work on ads. Will it? No idea, that's part of the fun. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So this is our Mother's Day case study and this is the product we're going to be targeting. So this is our <clears throat> graphic upload, buyer upload, uh, graphic heart. Stainless steel, and you'll have the engravable option uh, as well. And I chose this because it's not one that most people would sort of gravitate towards. It's, it's a little bit different than our normal uh, marketing expertise that we train. Most of the time, we're focusing on message cards or graphic uploads uh, that have an engravable back, but not a buyer upload. Uh, and that requires kind of different sets of skills. So message cards, which is our, you know, our tried and true bread and butter, uh, beautiful necklaces tied with emotional phrases, and then have that emotional phrase uh, as long as that captures someone's attention uh, and gets them to, to say what they want to say without them having to come up with it, they'll buy it. So that's its own skill set. Message cards require either hiring out or having pretty good copywriting skills. Now, <clears throat> yes, you could model, and we do highly recommend you, you frank and phrase or model off of other winners that you see out there uh, in the interwebs. Uh, we know that we get uh, people take our phrases and rework them or, and some of you, to direct copy them. Um, and that doesn't necessarily help anybody long term. Uh, but we do recommend that you model after, so take the most emotional uh, charged part of the phrase and then rework it into your own. Uh, that way you're not getting banner blindness uh, in the marketplace as quickly, right? So if everybody is sa selling the exact same phrase at the exact same time, uh, that's going to cause banner blindness in the market much, much faster. Uh, so that's message card. You sort of have to be good at copywriting or at least emotional uh, phrase writing. Then there's the graphic piece where we have uh, graphic design that you can upload and then they can buy. And uh, we offer that on this same necklace here. We offer it on the dog tag uh, and a few other pieces as well. <clears throat> and that sort of requires a graphic design talent or to hire out a graphic design talent. So what you would do in, in essence is take the phrase from the message card, which is usually a paragraph long, and you would take out the most emotionally charged sentence or, or, or segment of that longer paragraph style phrase. It's usually our graphic pieces will usually have one main sentence, one main emotional lob, if you will. Uh, and then we give it to a graphic designer or we graphic design it ourselves into a really pretty beautiful uh, design. And then not only are they buying the phrase, they're buying the design as well. So you have to have sort of both components uh, to make that piece work. On a buyer upload piece, you don't need either of those two things because you're really, there's no message card uh, and the user is providing the, the photo itself. <clears throat> so it takes a little bit different of a marketing angle, which is you have to create the angle in your ad. You have to set up the funnel correctly uh, and that's a little bit different of a skill set and you have to have a little bit more expertise on that end. So you all have to have an expertise in something to get it to sell. You either have to be good at writing a phrase or again, hire someone out for it or model something that's already worked. You have to have a, for graphic design pieces, you have to have a graphical uh, background or hire that out or take, here's this one phrase that I saw work really, really well. Let's give it to a graphic designer and have them create an image uh, similar to like a, that, this is the most similar to a t-shirt or a mug uh, type of print on demand style where you take a really short emotionally charged phrase, attach it with a really great design, uh, and then you have your graphic pieces. And then we have really, if you want to hone your marketing skills and your video skills and your uh, funnel skills, go straight for buyer upload because it is the hardest to, uh, to sort of get cracked because you have to create all the marketing angle itself. Um, but this is what we're going to do. Uh, will it work? I have no idea. Um, but we're going to give it a shot and we're going to learn a lot along the way. Uh, so that is this. And 
<clears throat> this is so like I said on this buyer piece the most important component is the ad because the ad is what really will drive all the clicks and the sales and you have to tell a story in your ad um, so what I chose to do and I'll show you the video this is our TikTok version of the video uh, I believe so yep this is the TikTok version of our video and this is what it looks like So that is their first salvo, if you will, for a video. All I did was take a bunch of images. These are all stock photos, by the way. Uh, all I did was take the stock photos that I found, and I cut them out into the heart shape. And then I applied them here, and I created different images. So these are just different images. I threw this into a video editor called After Effects, uh, and I applied the text here so that, and then I timed it to where it would the text would transition on the same time as the slide now so that's our base um, and we went ahead and are getting ready to set this up uh, to run so that is the video that we're doing for Facebook ads I'm running this experiment on both TikTok and Facebook to start with um, one to see does one traffic source like it better than another uh, and determine which traffic source should we be focusing on uh, at one time uh, like I don't want to during a test you don't necessarily want to run it extensively on both traffic sources uh, if you're trying to figure out do I want to stick with Facebook do I want to go to TikTok um, I would recommend if you have the budget to go ahead and set up the test for both traffic sources and then determine which works the best and if one CTR like click-through rate is higher than the other uh, one is getting way cheaper view contents than the other, then it may be in your best interest to keep focusing on, on that traffic source. Um, so this is a TikTok version. The uh, Facebook one is the exact same video. All I did was crop it to be a square. Now, I will say that the background is static and black, so the only movement in the video is on the slides and the text. And depending on what the data shows, uh, we may change up the background. So that's the video as it sits right now. Campaign structures on this. We will start with uh, TikTok first. Uh, we're setting them up in a little bit different of a structure, kind of what I think is going to work the best uh, for each. And then we'll sort of, you know, the next round of tests will we'll make it a little bit of adjustments. So on TikTok, this is our TikTok screenshot, the campaign mom buyer upload. We're running this as a campaign budget optimized campaign with a total daily budget of $200 for the campaign. On the ad set, or the ad group level, uh, TikTok calls them ad groups, Facebook calls them ad sets. Same thing, same functionality, just call them something different. Uh, we have pretty much what we did uh, I set up what we talked about in the previous video about TikTok audience selection. So this ad group is our hashtags. So all our hashtag mom. Uh, this one is going under our creator category. Uh, so there are four main targeting sections in TikTok. Uh, and it actually goes interests, video category, creator category, and then hashtags. Um, so creator category, I just did the most broad version I can do using family uh, video category I also chose family and then interest uh, I did uh, baby kids and maternity that's one interest that's very big very large um, if you want to see this more in depth uh, go into my previous video for shot of espresso uh, and I walk through how I selected uh, the different interests and what the categories look like and stuff like that so uh, I'll just skip ahead through that part please reference that other video uh, if you uh, need that bit of information so uh, this is the setup for it and then for each ad group we had the one ad and then the one ad again was the video that I just showed you 
uh, and our demographics are 25 plus that live in the United States. I did do manual placements, so we only are showing it on TikTok. We're not showing it on the other one, and we are using lowest cost bid. Okay, um, so that is our test on TikTok. On Facebook, it's slightly different. Uh, We're actually, I, I'm seeing better results uh, in the testing phase using ABO structures versus CBO structures. What that means if you're brand new is CBO is campaign budget optimization, meaning we're setting the budget at the campaign like we did on TikTok. In Facebook's test, I did not. I chose to do it as an ad set level. Uh, so the budget is at the ad set level and here's your campaign budget optimization and that's off. And you can see we're just using the campaign as a uh, placeholder. And then on the inside, this is our ad set setup. The ad set name I've linked with, I've just typed in uh, what the interests are that we're targeting. So pregnancy, outdoors, parents by year, what that is is it's demographics. And there is a, a target that says parents all. And then there are also targets that are like parents of infants, parents of newborn, parents of uh, uh, adolescents. And so I chose those ones over parents all. Costco, Veterans Day, Independence, uh, Patriotism, Online Shopping, Blue Collar Comedy Tour, Mom Life. And then each one of them has a budget of $20. So I'm running $200 a day on TikTok as a test and $200 a day on Facebook. Now, with that said, um, I am not run, I'm not going to let all of the budget run if the results midday of the first day are absolutely terrible. Just because you budget doesn't mean you have to spend the budget. That makes sense. If, and we look at compared to each other. So if I look at data, and we'll go over this over the, in the next shot of Espresso when, once these actually run and things. Um, I'll look at all of the interests and I'll see how they're performing against one another. So let's say pregnancy, for example, had a click-through rate of 1.5 and Veterans Day had a click-through rate of 0.3. Obviously, pregnancy is going to be interacting better than uh, Veterans Day in that case. Is that reality? I don't know. We'll find out once we run traffic to it. Um, but with that said, we will we would turn off Veterans Day, even if there's only like five or six dollars in spend in it, if our click-through rate is, is really, really bad in comparison to the other ad sets. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, and again, same setup uh, uh, as far as ad goes, so one ad per ad set. Okay. And that is our setup. Demographics, again, is still 25 plus. Uh, I chose all placements on Facebook and lowest cost bid. And you've got one ad creative per ad group. And now, what is this process look like? So these, this is the initial test. We'll let it run for a few days, see if we gather some data, see if we can make any learnings off of it, and then we'll make adjustments to it um, after that. Right, so I don't expect to, and, and no one really should expect to hit a home run uh, after the very first try. If it happens, fantastic, right? But the, the goal here is to start testing for Mother's Day. Now, for the the UK, if this was a UK setup, you know, it would be much more rushed, if you will. This is for the US and Canada, which is all the way out until May, like it's the first week of May. So this is an evergreen mother's related product. So right now I'm calling it a perfect gift for mom. I'm not calling it a Mother's Day gift for mom. My ads do not say anything about Mother's Day. If you think like a regular consumer, nobody is thinking about Mother's Day gifts right now. At least not that I know of, right? Like the average person is not going to be thinking of it. They'll start thinking of Mother's Day around the second week of April because that gives them about three weeks to find something, get it delivered, and they're set to go. The purpose of these, this test is to see if we can get to break even between now and the end of this month, and then we start working into profit in the first couple of weeks of April, and then we scale for Mother's Day. So we're trying, we have a lot of time to test and get right our ad creative, our targeting, and our scaling method. So that's the hope for this. I don't expect for this to work incredibly well out of the gate. This is a slow time uh, of the year unless you have like a specific design that works well for this uh, period. It can happen. Uh, our, internally, we've got a couple of designs that are working very, very well right now. And it has really nothing to do with any kind of holiday at all. Um, so Evergreen does work. It does work pretty good scale. Um, 
not as high as Q4. Like we're not pulling hundred thousand dollar days or anything, um, but we are doing pretty well. So with that said, um, this, the thought process behind this is start it now, get some initial data and then react to the data. If CTRs or click through rates are really low, then we need to go back to the drawing board on the video. Next steps on videos would be to order a sample so that we have a physical copy of the necklace and then we can shoot different videos for that. Um, and then if uh, in the interim, while we're getting the sample produced and shipped to us, uh, we can always tweak this particular slideshow video. I can change the background. We can speed up the transitions between them. Uh, I can shorten the time that it takes for the images to go, but the text can stay long. So there's a lot of stuff we can do. We can change the transitions from just a flip over on the slide to we can do like a bigger animation so that it's like more dramatic causing you know people to watch it a little bit longer hopefully read the text in the video that kind of thing um, but we'll see we'll see what happens after we run data through it so that is your shot of espresso for this week uh, hopefully you've learned a lot and hopefully uh, it's given you some motivation to go ahead and get started on your evergreen mother's uh, gift so that it's you are primed and ready to go uh, for mother's day in this ad environment, it may you may want to really get going here on Mother's Day uh, and start targeting evergreen mother stuff uh, because it can take a while to figure out what ad's going to work well, what ad structure, what kind of testing structure, which ad network you want to run with. Um, so time is a ticking, so don't waste it. All right, until next time, Shinies, uh, take care, and I will talk to you later.